Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Functional Nurse Podcast. My name is Bridget Sager, and I'm your host. Today, I have a guest that I'm really excited to interview. Lindsay Buell has been a nurse and now is a functional nurse. I'm going to tell you more about her background in just a second. But Lindsay, I'm really excited to talk today. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to give everybody a little bit of your background first, and then we'll get started. Lindsay has been a nurse for 15 years, and the majority of her nursing experience has been in emergency, trauma, and critical care. After going through her own autoimmune health crisis, she began seeking answers to questions she had about her own health, and she found those answers in functional medicine. She has now made a total shift in her practice and career. Lindsay took the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy's Functional Medicine for Nurses course, and she was in cohort number five, which transformed what she thought was possible for RNs to do in the wellness space without seeking additional advanced licensure. She now seeks to educate and empower people to be informed consumers of healthcare and advocates as partners in their healthcare team. She provides this education for free in a way that increases access and helps meet people's needs, no matter where they are in their journey. Lindsay is now running a YouTube channel, Revival Health RN, where she provides functional medicine education and tips for healthy living. And she's also doing some in-home IV services that I want to hear more about. Lindsay is most proud of her decision to fully focus on functional medicine as her career. For years, she struggled with cognitive dissonance between how she was practicing in her workplace and what she knew to be best practice. She's thrilled to be able to devote all of her attention and energy to helping people truly get well from the inside out. So I would like to start there, Lindsay. Can you talk about that journey of yours to becoming a nurse and then where you are now in your practice? Yeah. So I became a nurse in 2008. And really what took me into nursing, I think, is what takes most people into nursing the desire to help others. I really love science. I'm kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I'm the kind of person who will read, research, and listen to podcasts and read books all the time just for my own personal development because I love to know um, the inner workings of the human body. And so it seemed like becoming a nurse was a natural fit for me. I went straight into the emergency room after I finished nursing school and that was like a baptism by fire (laughs) in there and I spent many years in that sort of high stress high stakes nursing environment and you know I really do appreciate and value a lot of the work that I did there but it began to open my eyes to more questions and answers about Why are we seeing so many people coming in so young and so sick? Why are the same people coming back all the time for the same problems? Why are we just ending up with a prescription and a discharge and we're not really making a long-term difference in people's lives? So that's kind of my background as a nurse. And then I ended up finding functional medicine, as I think many people do, when my own health sort of hit a breaking point. I think that's so common, right? I hear that all the time, that that, that's how nurses find functional medicine initially. (laughs) Yeah, and I think it's really unfortunate because, you know, we're entering that healthcare system as an informed consumer, right? Like we know how the system works and we're entering into it as a nurse and it's not really until you are the patient that you really understand how dysfunctional it is and how few answers Mm -hmm. you get and how you will be turfed around from doctor to doctor to doctor who seemingly wants to do every test on you in the book that are all coming back normal and you feel terrible and you really begin to (laughs) peel back all of the layers of what you thought you knew to be true And that's what happened to me. I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's in 2013. And it really was my own doing that led me into functional medicine. I was told, here's some Synthroid, come back and see me in six months. And when I wasn't better, I I began to dig and that opened up the entire box of functional medicine. And that's where I've decided to plant myself 
to try to help other people who are having the same experience of being very frustrated about the answers that they're getting and concerned that they're physically not improving much or at all with the, with the conventional therapies. And I think too, when you see yourself get better and you've been a nurse for a while, and then you use some functional medicine practices on yourself and you get better, it's like, it just is like the blinders are off, you know, and then you go back to work and you're like, this is not, you know, I've read a lot of nurses mentioned that recently when they write things to me or we talk about it is they'll say, that it didn't align with how they take care of themselves anymore, you know, the kind of care that they're giving their patients. So finding a way to to be able to share it and practice, I think is so great. Absolutely. I felt the same way, you know, and I, it wasn't really until probably 2018 where I really went all in and decided to commit. I was kind of straddling the fence a little bit and probably a little bit, um, a little bit nervous to advocate all the way for myself. I still was trying to accept what I was being told and then do my own research, but it wasn't until I got the courage really to confront my healthcare providers and began to have more informed conversations that I really started to feel, okay, now I know what's going on with me. And now I feel like that I know all of this other stuff that I never learned in nursing school. I I had to use it in a way to help other people because everywhere I turn, friends and family are coming to me and asking me questions and, and saying, I am taking this and I don't feel better, or I've got this weird thing going on. Do you have any idea what this could be? Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of like <laughs> opening Pandora's box. <laughs> it has changed my entire life. I am certain that I would not be where I am today health-wise if I were not practicing functional medicine in my own home. Well, and that's probably, I would imagine why so many people around you are coming to you and asking you for some clarity because they've seen the change that in your health, you know, over the years that you've been doing this. I say a lot, that's the proof's in the pudding with that, right? Yes. Okay. They saw after my third child was born in 2018, I was so debilitated to the, with such inflammation to the point where I was barely, I was barely functioning. I was hearing my baby cry in the crib and I would start to cry because my physical body hurt so much that I knew that I was going to have to go and pick her up out of the crib and feed her. And my joints hurt so badly and my body hurt so badly. And that just that act of caring for my children was so difficult for me that if you knew me then and you knew me now, you can see that I really have revived my health. And that's why I named my channel that because I really do believe that we can bring it back to life to where it, where mm-hmm. we started. So I really like your name, Revival Health RN, and I think it's cool to hear where it came from. Um, And I am curious to, you know, you know, from being in the course, we'll talk about like, oh, what are you going to call yourself? What do you, how do you describe what you do to, you know, like we all choose our terms that we'll use. What do you, what do you call yourself and how do you describe that to people? So I call myself a functional medicine nurse and one of my biggest passions really is education. And I know that for me at different times in my life and for many people, functional medicine is is, um, hidden behind a cost wall. You know, there are times when it can be cost prohibitive or people have the perception that it has to be expensive. And so what I wanted to do with my channel was to really provide low cost, high yield information for people that they can practice right away. They can take whatever parts of it relate to their story and begin to implement them at low or no cost and have access to really qualified information, right? There's no shortage of instructors or educators on the internet. This we know there are people who have zero qualifications who are giving advice and it's very confusing for people to know what on earth they should do with their health what they should eat what they should not eat how to take care of themselves well and so i feel like with education 
being the core of what we do as nurses, this is a way for me to get information out to the masses where they can access it for free. And people trust nurses. And I think, you know, sometimes it, it comes up often nurses will say, oh, if I do nurse coaching, should I call myself a nurse coach or a health coach? And I think the value there is behind all of our education and licensure and how trusted we are as a profession. I think that the nursing part is so valuable. And then for you to be able to share it with people openly and they're like, OK, and I heard this from a nurse. Right. It's just not some like random quote unquote expert on the internet. So I think there's so much credibility there. I definitely agree. There's so much noise in that space that it's hard to get sound information. And so that's what I'm trying to provide true scientific information that is applicable to most people that they can take from it whatever they need, but they can come and find inspiration and find hope that their situation can be better. And you you choose the term functional medicine. And I like when I looked at, you know, like your YouTube videos and social media, it really is. You know, we we talk about that idea of like if you're not going to use a lot of testing and recommend a ton of supplements, then maybe you want to call yourself a lifestyle nurse or a holistic nurse because it's easier for people to, to get. But it sounds like you've had such a change in your health specifically from functional medicine that that term really aligns with you. It really does. It. And I and I find that a lot of people don't know what what that term means, what on earth is <laughs> functional medicine. And so it's it's a way also for me to introduce people to that concept that there is something out there that really, truly is geared towards improving their function in life. And so I mm -hmm. <laughs> I do prefer that term. And and how do you feel about um, on that same thread of talking about whether you use testing or not things uh, for you for scope of practice, like when you looked into what what you could do as an RN and then what you could do in, in your state? How how do you feel about your scope of practice and, and using functional medicine in your nursing practice? Well, I believe that there is so much that is available to us that we can encourage our patients, friends, and family that do not require testing. Now, of course, there are some circumstances where testing is indicated, and I always try to link people up to find a licensed provider who can order tests for them if, if needed. But I find that by changing your lifestyle, your habits, your diet, all of that, you can see such an improvement in your quality of life that oftentimes you don't need to go the route of testing. And I definitely advise a food first approach, which we learned a lot about in the course. Food first is huge. And um, I do believe that it doesn't have to be expensive, doesn't have to be time consuming. It doesn't have to be this giant elephant that you have to, you know, take on. You can you can make small changes in your life. And so that's one thing that I'm really wanting to encourage people is that these lifestyle changes, these habits and such, they are not out of reach for the everyday person. And, you know, when you look at a functional medicine provider's website, you may feel like this is not accessible to me right now. And I, and then I therefore feel stuck. So yep. that there's a, there's a lot to be done. There's a lot to be offered and said that is, that is pretty much low to no cost for people that can have a huge impact. I, I really love your perspective of, of trying to make it accessible to everybody. And I think, you know, there's definitely the argument of like food deserts where like people have trouble accessing like fresh fruits and vegetables. And that, you know, that's definitely an important topic. But I agree like so much of what we end up actually educating our patients on is to avoiding things in their lives that might be causing harm and like shifting their food choices and shifting how much time they're sitting and how much time they're moving, their sleep priorities, things like that. And all of that is in theory free, right? I mean, the food is the exception, I think, to that. Right. And I, I always believe also that there's a continuum of choices, right? There's poor, good, better, best. And so I feel like wherever you are on that continuum, we can just slide you up one notch even 
maybe two, maybe three. Yep. It doesn't have to be from poor to best. You know, I know that in this economic um, environment that we're in, it's not accessible for everybody to go to best. But can you go to better? You know, and so I think providing that information and helping to empower people to make informed choices on the things that matter the most is what I'm really passionate about. Yeah. And I'm like, if you have somebody that's in poor health and let's say they have chronic pain every day and some of that's related to drinking a case of soda, you know, then maybe they're having diet soda all day long and it's impacting, you know, their body in several ways and maybe they have some chronic health conditions and chronic pain and we get them to where they're having a few less a few less you know they're maybe they're not going to get to like you're talking best better but if we get them to where they're not in poor health and they can actually be a little bit more active and their chronic pain improves from reducing some of the things in their lifestyle choices that are contributing to that that can have a trickle down effect right because then okay we got them to pretty okay and then and then they feel better enough to to make some some more progress and i think it's motivating too right we get somebody just a little further but like a little bit better and and yeah i like to think of it as a spectrum just like you're describing you know and if we we can't get everybody to like the perfection there's no such thing in in our health i think um but shifting anytime we can shift them in the right direction i think it's wonderful yes i I feel like when someone begins to feel better, even in an incremental way, they get the buy-in into their own health and feel like, okay, wow, this really is making a difference. And then maybe they're more interested in hearing the other uh, things that you have to say. Mm -hmm. It's like a little, you're just climbing the ladder one step at a time. Yeah. Well, and how off-putting is it if they come to you and you say, oh, here's how to eat perfectly. And they're like, well, that's completely not going to happen. Right. So um, I think that incremental can be really important for keeping people on the right track, too. <laughs> yes. And you, you have to you have to assess where people are in their readiness for change. You know, what are they willing to do? What are they able to do in the season of life and the stage they are in the financial situation they're in? What can they do and start small and work your way up from there? Because not everybody is completely ready to overhaul their diet and their lifestyle and their sleep and their environment and their personal care products. It can seem overwhelming, but if I can maybe just get you to stop drinking soda first, I'm taking that as a win. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so how can you tell us more about what you're what you're doing right now? You mentioned uh, before we hit record that you're doing some in-home care and, and I wanted to talk about like what that's like because for for me I have not done in-home care myself I did when I was working on my bachelor's I did um one of my clinicals was to follow a home health nurse and it was really fun um but I I really enjoyed it and like seeing the same people every week with her was fun but um I it was it was a big learning experience for me to go into people's homes and like see them less as patients and more as humans and see how they live. And um, but also all those things that you learn to screen people for when you like, you know, you worked in the hospital, too. It's like, oh, the fall risk. And what's it like at home? And do you grab bars and all those things you like your wheels are turning the whole time for well, for me. So I wanted to hear what it's been like for you, not just going in people's homes, but now having the functional medicine perspective and going in people's homes. Yeah. So it's it's really interesting. And I tell you, I really do enjoy it a lot. So I'm working with a local nurse practitioner who is very holistically minded. She herself actually does almost exclusively in-home care. So she sees people like good old fashioned calls. And it's it's been such a blessing to be a part of her team because we really do try to see people, as you're saying, as humans, not just as patients or names on a list. You know, we're going into their homes. And spending time with them, you know, at, at this point, what I'm doing is in-home IV infusions. And so I am spending a chunk of time with these patients. I'm coming in, I'm doing an assessment, taking vitals, putting in the IV, hanging the, the IV. And in that time, we have a lot of time to talk. My um, boss has pretty much given me freedom 
to talk with them about anything functional medicine related that comes up. I can, she's given me permission to recommend things and discuss and talk about lifestyle or whatever they have. You know, when you have time, like we never had in the hospital, right? You don't have an hour to sit mm -hmm. and, and talk with them and talk with their spouse or their children or other people who live in the home. You have a real opportunity to make a connection that you don't, that you can't do in the hospital. It's really, it's been such a gift. And so and now I have permission and the education to speak to people in their homes. And it's just when they're in their most comfortable setting and it, it has been, it's been honestly really fun. I have really enjoyed that as a very different change of scenery um, from working in the hospital. Do you have any tricks for like figuring out how much they want to hear? Because, you know, we talk about that, like not everybody wants to hear our long spiel. <laughs> they want their medications. They, um, so like, uh, is there a way that you kind of evaluate how, <laughs> where to go with them in your conversations? So sometimes we'll, we'll, we can start when I'm reviewing their health history with them. And I can say, um, you know, tell me about this diagnosis or tell me about that diagnosis and how are things going, you know, and that gives an opportunity to, to discuss more. I know that the nurse practitioner that I'm working with is seen in a more holistic light in our community. And so sometimes mm -hmm. I can say, how did you hear about us? You know, and that will give us some information. And like, oh, I heard about them from this person or that person who's really into natural health or there are some that are not really interested in natural health, but just want to be seen in their home for the convenience factor. And so that opens up some some opportunities to talk about their diagnoses and different things that they have going on. And, you know, I can just plant little seeds and say, well, you know, have you ever considered this? And or have you ever thought about this as an option? And just kind of um, test it out and see what they say. And if they're open to it, then that kind of gives me opportunity to go with my full spiel of information, <laughs> which I definitely do. <laughs> and uh, it's honestly usually well received. You know, most people who are unhappy with their health are looking for other opportunities to improve it. <laughs> so that has been. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's been my primary way that I've been able to kind of just see if, if people are really interested in it or not. I want to take that back to the hospital. When we were talking earlier about you started trial by fire in the emergency room, and that had me thinking of when I started, uh, when I went to nursing school and graduated, I thought I wanted to be a midwife. And then halfway through, you know, I got a job in the hospital and I really enjoyed, um, as I was a nurse tech, I really enjoyed being with the um, mostly older adults that I was caring for and like the, I realized that a lot of what I was into was the the teaching and the biochemistry and like looking at labs and thinking about how the medications might interact, all those things. But so I never expected to work in a hospital until I got that job, which, you know, paid the bills at the time. And um, I think in nursing school, I kind of just really started to believe that like the hospital is where you go or, you know, long term care facility, like that's where nurses work. And during times like when I would f like follow the home health nurse when I did my bridge to BSN, um, that opened my eyes a little bit. And then I started to think more about where nurses can work in other ways, but still not in this like holistic and a little bit more entrepreneur kind of perspective. And I think when you're in the hospital, it kind of feels like this is what it feels like to be a nurse. Like, welcome to the club. It's stressful all the time, you know, and our 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 work impacts our health. And then if we fast forward till now for both of us, it's like realizing that that's not true. You know, culturally, maybe as nurses, we kind of like put that on our, our profession that it that it needs to be that we sacrifice some of ourselves in order to take good care of other people. Um, but I mean, you're a great example of that not being the case. And so I wanted to hear your thoughts on that and, and hear like, how much do you think stress was playing a role in your health at, at the time that you found uh, holistic care more? Oh, sure. So every time that I tell someone that I meet that I'm a nurse, their first question is always, what hospital do you work at? And I say, well, I don't practice mm -hmm. in a hospital at this point anymore. And it's always interesting to hear people 
um, and their ideas of what they think a nurse should do. And it's been really, it's been so much fun to explore all of the other options. You know, when I, when I became a nurse, I wanted to do emergency room. I wanted to be like trauma nurse practitioner and do all of that stuff. <laughs> and I can definitely see how the stress of that environment impacted my health. At the time, I was working on two, two ER jobs. I was training for a marathon. I was running like 60 plus miles a week. I was, I was nuts. I would wake up in the morning and I would run like 10 miles and then I would go work my 11 to 11 shift. Okay. <laughs> this is how mm -hmm. crazy was. And at that time. And you got more miles then. <laughs> I got so many miles. I felt like <laughs> it was some kind of a badge of honor that I was able to do all of this, you know, and now I realize how much I was wearing myself down into the ground. And I really wish that I had learned 10 years ago, 15 years ago, how to care for myself better. You know, when you're in when you're in the hospital setting, especially in, in a very acute setting like the emergency room, you know, there's not really time for you to care for yourself. You are going from thing to thing to patient to patient, from from one emergency to another. And I would get to the end of my shift and think, what in the world just happened? You know, like there was no, you couldn't drink water. Lunch was a joke. It never existed, you know, and that kind of thing. Um, it was it was so stressful. And while I definitely appreciate and think that, you know, that kind of care is needed at times, and I'm so thankful that it exists, but I'm also so thankful that I'm not a part of that machine anymore. <laughs> so many of my friends that worked with me on like the higher acuity floors, you know, had so many chronic health conditions develop after becoming a nurse. Um, and I think for me, stress was the big thing. And I was I was doing high acuity stuff like you, but um, one of my best friends was with the, like the the director of the emergency department. And I that sounds like too much for me. And I I at least know that know that now. But you know, I felt I always felt like step down units and and the ICU was um, often controlled chaos. You know, it was like uh, I had a clinical instructor say to me in nursing school, "Get your drama at work." And I thought that was cool, like, because I think I was younger and, and I like you're talking about, like, there's some thrill from it, maybe. Um, and I definitely don't ever want any of my personal life. So so the work part sounded perfect. Um, but I would go help because I did do critical care float. So I would go help in the emergency room sometimes. And I was like, no, thank you. This is like you have no idea what's going to happen every minute, you know, and who's going to be available to help you. And at least in the ICU, we kind of had a plan for like how we were going to do things. Um, but anyway, so I'm totally rambling about that. But it's just the stress of it. It just the emergency room makes me think of war. Like you just have no idea what's going to happen all the time. And I think as nurses, you know, I started to hear that term of like having PTSD as a nurse when I was like working maybe 10 years ago, people started to talk about that. And I think it's real. You know, I've had some really dear friends have extremely traumatic things happen at work. Um in an acute setting and and we don't acknowledge so much the impact that that has on us of like stress for like you said 11 to 11 that's 12 hours straight of just like extreme fight or flight mode um Absolutely. and so yeah what role does that have in our health story and how much did that impact you know what happened for you um and so now you know for us to have jobs that are a little bit less stressful i think it's it's really wonderful that we can still help people without being in that state all the time yes i completely agree and i think that you know when you know better you do better and now i know better that i'm not interested in running myself to the ground anymore that my health matters and how on earth can i be a health promoter and a health educator if i'm not sharing for my own self and that's something that I feel was very prevalent in that em emergency room setting. It's like a badge of honor if you worked a double and didn't take a lunch. And now <laughs> it's not going to be me anymore. I have, I have. Yeah, because then you have to ask, what's the price? What's the price you pay? Right. Right. So many people that I've worked with over the years who have heard about what I've been doing 
who have seen my health improve. I mean, there was a period of time where I was working where I missed chunks of work due to my autoimmune things when it was when it was first happening. I would miss chunks of work and because uh, I was literally unable to do the tasks that I needed to do. And so now I feel like people have seen that and are seeing the light like like we were saying earlier, you know, they can see that, oh, maybe there is another way that I could be living and to mirror myself. Maybe there are other opportunities where I can use my nursing skills, right? Like I'm still using my conventional nursing skills, taking vitals, I'm starting IVs, I'm hanging IV fluids and things like that. But I'm I'm also allowed to be a human caring for humans. And that has been such a gift. Oh, I like that. Because yeah, I don't, think that we feel like I, I I did not feel like a human so much in the hospital, probably more of a cog, you know, in a wheel. I know that you you mentioned that you really wanted to talk um, in this about uh, balancing like the blend of functional and conventional medicine. And we do need nurses in the hospital. We do need nurses in all settings of healthcare. Um, and I think there's just as much value for both. But but the shift, I think, is that we have for so long been trying to figure out the downstream things. What are we going to do to be the very best type of healthcare practitioner in these acute settings and in chronic health pictures and people coming to the hospital because their chronic health problems have caught up with them versus the going upstream part that we're participating in more now as functional nurses. Um, and and in the course, we talk about that, you know, the idea that you wanted to talk about, about functional medicine and conventional medicine being a partnership that's really important for us to acknowledge. Um, and I think I've gotten better at articulating it since your cohort, too. You know, I try to make sure to talk to students really early on in the course about the fact that this this isn't a replacement. It's it's something that we should be using more and more in healthcare to keep people from needing to end up in the hospital ever like hopefully this becomes more everyday practice for all healthcare practitioners in the future that we're considering the why and doing a lot of preventative work and talking about the true value of thinking about what you eat and what you're exposed to and how you care for yourself um and so uh yeah so i wanted to hear your thoughts on that too because i think it's an important topic that we don't talk about enough that we're not trying to replace anything or say functional medicine is better than they're totally different yes i completely agree and i think that some people want to you know go into one side and be very polarized and think well i'm only going to do these things that are natural other people are thinking well that's all out there and woo woo i'm, I'm only going to follow this but there has to be a marriage right because when we didn't have all the pharmaceuticals and we didn't have all, all of that available to us, what did people do? Now, obviously, mm -hmm. there are tremendous amount of benefits from modern medicine in many ways. And I believe that there is a middle ground <laughs> that most of us can walk. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't have to be either or. It can be both and. And, you know, there are there are some conditions that are going to require lifelong medication. I take several medications lifelong to help me with my Hashimoto's, but I have been able to limit the progression of that disease through my lifestyle choices and how I'm caring for myself. And so there has to be a benefit for both camps, you know? So I think that we have to consider, you know, what is the problem, right? You know, I see all the time on some of these online threads when people are coming on and they might say, oh, you know, my child was just diagnosed with strep throat and I don't want to do antibiotics and what should I do? And so I, I try to think, well, there is a time and place for modern medicine, right? I personally would choose to treat that with antibiotics, but use the information that I have to restore the gut afterwards, right? It doesn't have to be, mm -hmm. I'm only going to do this one side, or I'm only going to do that, right? We we can be wise consumers of the healthcare information that we are receiving, and we can, we can learn how to support our bodies. You know, there are people who 
for whatever reasons, they, you know, they have their own reasons who might say, I need to stay on my birth control pills. Okay, well, that's an opportunity for me to come alongside you and educate. Okay, that's your choice. Here's what you can be doing to help support yourself while you're doing that. You know, here are some things mm-hmm. you might want to consider. You might want to take some B vitamins. You might want to like, there are some other ideas that you might want to do to protect your microbiome from the changes that are going to be happening. So it doesn't have to be either or. You know, there are there is such a beautiful middle ground if if you can turn off all the noise and see it. What a great example of the birth control like that. You know, we can we can have an opinion of what a perfect plan might look like for us and and what it might look like for somebody else is totally different. And we still need to be able to take what we're what we're offering and merge those things together and. So I think that's a great example, supporting somebody in their choices. Um, and you said wise consumer, and it was making me think about, I like that term a lot, but we're nurses, you know, and so how informed are we out the door? Yeah, I f- because we have the knowledge we have, right? And so it really highlights for me what we talk about a lot in in the course is about um, about. N- nurses we know more than we acknowledge that we do and we still struggle with our own health until you know like uh, and and with functional medicine you know we we can heal people along a spectrum maybe we get them completely better maybe we get them somewhat better but um but we we can be that that bridge to wisdom for people right because they're like okay i'm getting a ton of health information from 10 different sources every day and i don't even know where to start and so exactly what you're saying like having the conventional a lot of things from conventional healthcare. we we don't want to discourage but we also can offer a lot of education to people that are trying to make wise health choices yes i feel like in a way we can help to be the filter for people as they're trying to sort through the information that they've received and help them to process it and put it into terms that they can understand and that they can actually implement and put into practice in their own lives. And the the other thing you said that I wanted to talk about a little bit more is about um, the spectrum of healing, right? You made me think about the idea that uh, we use the term healing a lot, I think, as functional nurses. And I think it is profound how often you can literally make somebody not have a health diagnosis anymore by using functional medicine practices with them. And so as functional nurses, we literally can heal people to the degree of like 100%, you no longer have this diagnosis anymore. But it also is, I think, really important to acknowledge that it's a spectrum, right? And so what percentage, we can make it where, like you said, it isn't getting worse, or maybe it's drastically better than it was. And you're a really great example of that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Sure. I I really do believe that when we're assessing our clients, we have to we have to first de- determine what are what are their goals? What are they hoping to accomplish? You know, in some cases as you're saying, we can help them completely heal from something and reverse all of that damage. In some cases, there has already been a good amount of damage done and our goal is to seriously improve your quality of life or reduce or eliminate your pain? What is their goal for adding the functional medicine piece? And so I think that there is a lot to be said for bringing that patient on board and hearing what they have to say. What are they, what are they hoping to accomplish here? And then meeting them where they are and helping them take the baby steps to wherever it is that they want to go. You know, not every disease is going to be completely reversible. You know, there are some people like me who will be on some medication for their lifetime. But for me, Mm -hmm. when I was able to implement all of these changes that I that I made in my own life, I mean, they were about to put me on biologics. And I was like, I don't think I want to do that especially working in the emergency room, but I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm just be, be sick all the time. You know, I'll just be oh. sick every, yeah. all the time. And so 
I've been able to stay off of those for over 10 years, which has been such a blessing for me. Like I have been able to, to reduce my chronic pain by 95%. And so for me, that was the goal. Like, I don't know that I'll ever be completely healed from my Hashimoto's, but is my quality of life unbelievably better? Yes, it is. And so I think that's something that we need to we need to assess when we're first working with someone. You know, what are what are they hoping to achieve? What is possible? There's always more possible than they think, you know, because sometimes they will be told there is no cure. It doesn't matter what you eat. It, there is no impact on your disease from your lifestyle. And that's for the overwhelming majority of people, not true. <laughs> there is a lot to be said for your lifestyle. There is a lot to be said for what you eat and how you live and how you sleep yep. and how you care for yourself. And so in addition to assessing mm. their goals, you know, you have to, like you can educate them that there is probably more possible than what they've been told. Because that was the case for me. I was mm. told that it didn't matter what I ate. It didn't matter you know, how I lived, that my extremely stressful life and job wasn't really a big deal because I was young and I was resilient. Well, that is not true. My my entire life changed when I began to understand that for me, being healthy is not just the absence of symptoms. Being healthy is being well on a cellular level at the foundation of my life not just the absence of symptoms, because things can take a long time to slowly brew in your body before you develop those symptoms. And, you know, you don't know um, what is going on even in your own body at that time. People also need to realize on the, on the flip side that it's not going to be an immediate change, right? You have to commit to the process of caring for yourself. Health is not a destination, it is a journey, that it was is ongoing forever and there's really no end. <laughs> because as we continue to grow as people and you know our our health and lives will change. And at other times in life we have more capacity to do more and to try more things. You know, I'm at a place now where my youngest child is now five. So I'm sleeping again and I have all this energy and I'm I have now I am now able to do and to have the physical, emotional, mental capacity for things that I could not have considered five years ago, you know, and so it's all happening on a spectrum. Ninety five percent is a lot better, like <laughs> what you said a minute ago. That's, I mean, that's wild. And I think it was your cohort that we had uh, one of the first couple suits. Because now this is a, this is a, I know this is a controversial topic, but this has come up so many times now that I know for sure that it's a thing. Um, students telling me and telling us in the Zoom meetings and writing about it in in uh, things that they share with the course um, participants that they will have children. They found functional medicine because they have children with either autism or ADHD and they looked for something different. And, you know, their child went from like nonverbal and, you know, not able to feed themselves to like being completely undiagnosed severe autism after using functional medicine practices. And I, I know that that's a topic that not everybody um, is excited to hear yet. But I think that's the future is that we're going to acknowledge that a lot of the things that we have decided are permanent diagnoses for people, we really can. I mean, even in that situation, that that particular person sharing their story, it it was it was even if it wasn't undiagnosed, the fact that they could talk and go to school and participate in a regular classroom with their peers and and feed themselves like I mean just oh my gosh and 10 years ago I don't know what I would have thought if I'd heard that from somebody but now I've had I mean I've heard so many case studies in functional medicine of that other practitioners experiencing that but now I've had tons of students tell me really similar stories and it's just incredible. I've been hearing a lot of the same thing you know we we inherit our parents toxic load right <laughs> This we now know. And so this has been 
an interesting little thing in even in my own home and it's very small scale but i had been concerned about my my youngest child's behavior for some time when 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 she was small when she was like a toddler and um it it wasn't until i really cleaned up my entire family's diet that i realized that i was contributing <laughs> To her behavior when i improved everything that she was eating when i completely eliminated food dyes tell you my child night and day night and day behavior attitudes able to handle her emotions i mean it was unbelievable and i think that's one that's one small change and that's what i'm hoping to mm -hmm. educate people on is that not not everything is as permanent as they say that it is there is so much that you can do that can not only impact you as a person but the next generation of people you know our children the future they say that the next that like kids my kids age will be the first who the first generation that will have a shorter lifespan than their parents i read that recently and that just hit me so hard in thinking why with all of our modern technology and health innovation are we not improving length of life right it's because so much of what we're doing as you were saying is downstream you know we're if you get to the point where you're already sick it's it takes a lot more effort to turn around and swim upstream and fix the problem but we are poised at such an important time i think as nurses as sisters and friends and wives and caregivers and daughters to educate the people around us so we can truly impact the health of this next generation. That's something that I'm so passionate about because I know, at least in my home, once I became educated and empowered, that changed my entire household. My husband, all three kids have now turned like a sharp left and are living in a way that is sustainable for for true long-term health and that's what we have the power to do as nurses is we can really impact long term and that's what i felt i was not able to do or see in the hospital setting and what i love about functional medicine is that you you really do see long-term change in people's lives and that's that that keeps me going you know it keeps me going and keeps me wanting to continue because I know that I'm helping to set people up for long-term long -term success. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching and instilling in my own children how to make good choices, you know, on that scale of poor, good, better, best. Like, we want to live at better <laughs> or best if we can, you know. And, <laughs> and, you know, my kids will kind of tease with me or whatever. But, you know what, my 10-year-old... Will go to the store with me and she can pick up an item read the nutrition label and know automatically whether or not i'll buy it and that for me is like such a personal sense of pride that like she'll look at it and say oh it's got seed oils and put it back or oh it's got high fructose corn syrup <laughs> put it back but you know what that mm -hmm. that's something that i didn't think that i, I don't think was really well talked about when I was a child you know it wasn't really well known and uh so not not only are we able to impact people in a professional sense but I think about like our families like what what they're going to see modeled for them which I think is so important the last few conferences that I've been to the topic of longevity has really been a big part of it and epigenetics you're talking about inheriting things from our families and and passing them on and those are two really big topics and the, what you said about life expectancy is so different from lifespan and it's spot on right like why would we have a shorter life expectancy for our children if we have this modern health system that's so fantastic um but i'm trying to remember the fellow's name but i mentioned it in i did an episode where i shared what i learned at a um recent conference and um it was an expert in in longevity and 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 healthy aging said that 
he's positive that within the next 10 years, they will announce that the potential lifespan of a human is 125 to 150 years. And that really just does not align with where we're headed and what you were just mentioning about health outcomes for our children. And um, it says so much about our potential and, 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 and the role that functional medicine can play in, in improving that. I'm glad you brought that topic up. <laughs> it's a really important one. And when we have children, it's on our mind. It, it is so much on our mind. And when, when you see your own child make a, a 180 degree turn, you know, with, with her behavior, it's so rewarding, you know, to see, okay, this was, this was a small buy-in, you know, not, I mean, I was already all in, but, you know, when I, when I began to roll it out for my family piece by piece, you know, and one thing that I will, that I will say that I really try to encourage people to do when they're trying to make big changes in their home is I try to really encourage people, don't go cold turkey on everything, right? <laughs> Substitute. I always say when something runs out, you get a better substitute for it. You know, I know that a lot of kids are creatures of habit, right? So they don't want all of their snacks to just be gone all of a sudden. You can find better options. And I have, uh, you know, one of my most popular videos on my channel is um, shopping at Costco and helping people see this is what I would get. Here are three choices of this item. And I'm going to read the labels with you. And I'm going to show you why I picked this one over this one. And so there's just ways that you can substitute and make improvements because it, it can be so hard to overhaul everything all at once. And sometimes the small people in our lives are not on board. <laughs> and it makes me, this is, this is, kind of a weird thing to share but I think it's really it, it, I always think of it when people talk about their kids won't eat well is I worked for this veterinarian a long time ago and he had a dog food that was a, a really great product that he he would sell and he would he would get a profit from selling it and it was very natural um I don't think organic was a big label back then but sometimes people would come back in and they'd say oh well, my dog didn't really want to eat it and he was like well they're gonna get hungry <laughs> and I always think of that when people talk about kids and food and and like what you just said it's like because the, what I would do is like when they were little and I would switch for a healthier option for one thing, like you said, replace it as it comes up. I would just go, oh, yeah, we don't have that one right now, but we have this one. And eventually that's just the new one. Right. And then the next time you replace a different one and they're a captive audience. Right. They're like the dog with the food that they don't like. It's like, I mean, they're going to eat eventually. And so <laughs> when your kids are like, oh, I don't like this new one, be like, well, we don't have the old one anymore. You know? Yes. Yeah, that one's not in the house. <laughs> but but that can that could be tough and it's not fun. It's not a fun conversation. But we really do have so much impact over what our kids eat and sometimes it's it the change is difficult, but you're right, gradual I think is the way to go for sure. Yes, it's it has made a huge impact in my own household and and I I just think it's so important, you know, when 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 my kids grow up and they leave me, which I know is going to happen someday, my my goal for them in life is that they, you know, they may or may not want to adopt all of the principles that I had in our home. But I know that during the most formative years of their developmental life, right, I have protected them. I have kept them safe. I have I have reduced the environmental toxins in our home, right? Like, because we, we cannot control every situation. And I think that that is unhealthy because that just creates so much extra stress. It is not It is not possible, as you said, to live a perfect life. But in my home, mm -hmm. because I also do homeschool my kids, in my home is where we spend the overwhelming majority of our time. And so that's where I control the, the environment, right? I don't think it's healthy for us to be so stressed out about every little thing, you know, do I travel with some of my own things? Yes. If I go to an Airbnb and I see an air freshener, do I take it out? Yes. <laughs> but, but, you know, there has to be some kind of a balance, right? Where you're not adding a tremendous amount of stress over health that's going to negate the health choices you're making. Well, and I think even more than what you're saying about like, providing them with that environment is you've taught them how to 
think for themselves and question things that might impact their health, which I think is going to carry them long term, you know, because my sons are the same and um, they're going to make choices as they get older. They're teenagers and above, you know, I can't control what they do when they're out. They make food choices without me and I don't want to. I want them to make their own choices, but they know the difference and how it'll impact their health, which I think that's the most important thing. We're like getting them a st- solid start. And you talking about reading the labels I was thinking about when I was a kid. I think I remember because we did not have a good diet in our home and we also did not um, talk about food and health much. Um, and I remember like the impression was that high fructose corn syrup was made from corn. So it was like a vegetable. <laughs> it was like a vegetable. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, we've come a long way. Yes, we have. You know, I can I can remember all of the different fads, you know, low fat, high fat, are carbs bad, is coffee bad, are eggs bad, are eggs good? It's so hard to keep track. And again, that's the reason why we need qualified nurses to be giving instruction, because there's so much confusion out there. And, you know, and I think just still even in this age of information people are truly not informed you know people will hear one thing and take it to be the gospel truth but it's like well what i'm trying to teach my kids let's evaluate that and think about that critically and decide does this make sense does this make sense does this align with what we're trying to accomplish with our lives is this does this match what we're trying to do and if it doesn't get rid of it Mm mm-hmm I love with my boys, sometimes they'll make food choices that, you know, they'll be with friends and they'll come back and they'll go, oh, gosh, my stomach hurts. And I'll go, well, what'd you eat? <laughs> and then they're like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yes. It's like um, at the holidays, my one daughter was like, oh, oh, I eat too many cookies. I had too much sugar. I can feel it. <laughs> I said, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> but now you know what that feels like. And maybe you won't want to do it again. <laughs> Right. It's good practice for us for with our clients. We could do it with our kids. Absolutely. <laughs> they are a very good captive audience. So, Lindsay, before we wrap up, I wanted to ask um, what insights would you share with a nurse that's listening that is considering a similar path to you but hasn't taken these steps yet? I would encourage you to just go ahead and do it. There's really there is no downside. Right. We're we have to be lifelong learners as nurses because everything is always evolving and changing and technology and information. And so we we have to, we owe it to ourselves and to our patients to stay up to date. And this is really where the future of healthcare, I believe, is going. You know, so if you want to be able to provide the best education and the best care to your patients and also to yourself, jump in to functional medicine and promise you, you will not regret it. There, there is, and, and there's so much more out there, like we were saying, as far as opportunities for places to practice. If you're in a, a place that is not aligning with your personal values, there is so much more that you can do as an RN that you don't need to go back to school to get an, an NP license. You don't need to go back to um, do a lot of formal education in in that way. You know, you can practice under your scope in so many ways that I was not aware of really until I took the Inca course that there is so much that I am able to do right now. And you can start implementing the information right where you are because you will learn information that applies to patients of all ages of all diagnoses of all conditions and you'll only make yourself more educated and well-rounded and you'll never be bored again (laughs) because (laughs) the rabbit hole just continues But I would also yep. <laughs> I would also say to go into it with an open mind because for me there was definitely a point where I had to unlearn things that I thought I knew to be true. And so go into it with an open mind and evaluate for yourself. You know, the information that we've been taught is usually just coming from one side, you know. So Use those critical thinking skills you have and begin to question and research and find out for yourself. You know, 
there are so many resources available for you that as a nurse, you'll be able to understand and appreciate. And they will really open your eyes to so much that you that you didn't think was even possible. And I don't know about you, but then as I learned that, I was like, oh, my God, that's so obvious. Like <laughs> so many things about functional medicine, once you learn them and you uh, like you said, unlearn, then you're like, oh, wow, that makes sense. OK, yep. yes. It, I mean, it's there's just a whole lot of common sense in functional medicine, right? <laughs> that 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 health doesn't you can't inject health. You can't ingest health. Right. Health comes from inside. And so. <laughs> Um, a lot can be done from your diet, of course, but I'm telling you, I had <laughs> I had to unlearn so much and, and just realize that what is true health? What is true wellness? What do I want for myself, my family, my patients? What What is it that I want? I want the best for them. And I know that other nurses do as well. And so we need to go into it with an open mind and be ready <laughs> To dive in head first because there is there is so much waiting for you on the other side. That is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, thank you so much. I think this was a great conversation and I think it was so many different things that we touched on that apply to every nurse I know. <laughs> so I'm really, I'm really grateful that you were able to share your insights and and we could commiserate on a few things. Yeah. Um, thank you for being on the show today. Oh yes, it was really fun. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And I'm going to share in the show notes, it'll share how to connect with Lindsay's uh, Instagram page and her YouTube channel. Um, And until next time, everybody be well. Thank you for tuning in for this episode of the Functional Nurse Podcast. If you want to help spread the word about the powerful role nurses can play as true healers using functional medicine practices, consider sharing an episode with a nurse friend or on social media. And click the subscribe button to stay informed of newly released episodes. You can also visit and share the links below in the show notes for more information on nursing resources and the Functional Medicine for Nurses course offered through the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy in partnership with the Institute for Functional Medicine.